Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, oh my gosh, I'm tired. <laughs> you know, I did the video this morning. Walking is great. Well, eight hours later, <laughs> uh, not as much fun. But well, since Fat Boy, government name me, wanted to eat all day yesterday, Fat Boy, government name me today, gets to uh, walk a lot today to walk it off. So anyway, this is a uh, Marvel team up number five. So, I read a lot of comics, uh, and uh, I forget uh, storylines until I start reading the next issue. So, I bought this as an easy roast, and I forgot that I think I actually gave the previous issue a pass. Like I said, it was pretty solid. And uh, it's 2019. Things are really, really weird. So, this is the video where I explain why segregation is bad. <laughs> Segregation, of course, is, you know, separating people uh, based on uh, identity groups. And it's traditionally been done among uh, races and genders, men apart from women and uh, different races. And, uh, you know, 100 years ago to 50 years ago, the, you know, the world kind of made a big push against segregation, most of the world. And uh, uh, now it's uh, coming back. Marvel uh, pretty much has a hard and fast rule. Um, that if it's a female character, you need a female writer. If it's a black character, you need a black writer, Muslim, da 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 da. Uh, although we see it kind of loosens up, like uh, 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 for the Miss Marvel official title, uh, it's only been Muslim writers and mags. <laughs> if you're higher on the progressive stack, if you outrank someone on the progressive stack, trans is higher than Muslim, then you get to write a Muslim character. Um, so this one is a team up. So it's it's not exactly Captain Marvel's or Ms. Marvel's book. Um, but the first uh, storyline was written by Eve Ewing. Uh, you know, th this is 2019. You come into the uh, comic book industry and you have the right uh, identity. And boy, you are going to have four or five, six books within a couple months. Um, uh, her stuff is okay. All of her stuff is okay. Uh, she has a lot of potential, but she's not going to be pushed because that would be problematic. So if she does elevate and grow, you know, like uh, someone like Chip Zdarsky did, it's pretty much entirely on her own to do that because uh, basically no one's going to tell her, you know, what she needs to improve because people get scared. Um, this right here is pretty good. You know how sometimes I'm doing like a Twitter drama video and I start doing like a nerd voice? Because I just assumed because like, I don't know, someone has a steampunk hat that they're kind of an SJW. And then I get like halfway through and I, then I switch to a regular voice because I realize they're saying something unassailable. I started this as like, yeah, Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel. Psh, yeah, whatever, whatever. Okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. Oh, they're actually not agreeing with Oh, there's actually some drama. Other. Oh, Wait. Oh. <laughs> and then I went, uh. Oh, I remember. I liked the previous issue. It was actually well written. And, uh, who, let's see who the writer was, because I just started. Clint McElroy. So, I know it's 2019 and we can't assume anything. This could be broccoli. We can't assume it's concrete. Um, but, uh, I'm going to hazard a guess that Clint McElroy is, uh, a man. Uh, excuse me, I forgot how you're supposed to pronounce it like this. A man. Uh, he's a man. And uh, so he doesn't have any of the person of privilege advantages. Uh, you can, uh, so uh, the, the little plot twist here is this is the best Captain Marvel and Miss Marvel story I've read since, well, I, I, I did the X-Men annual. That was a really good Captain Marvel story. Uh, Miss Marvel, I don't think I've, uh, you know, Zim, Jim's up. Wait. Wait, <laughs> what is this commonality between the good writers? I know you're not supposed to say it. I know mentally ill people will stalk you for years if you say it, but this is a majority male pastime. So it kind of makes sense that the majority of people attracted to writing super American superhero comics are gonna be men. If you make a habit of picking people like Eve Ewing, because they're, they pitched themselves that they had the same skin color and hairdo as the character they wanted to write. If you hire people who sell 769 copies because it makes you look woke, if you do X, Y, and Z, and if you 
provide a disservice to people like Eve Ewan by never really giving them some you know, hard critique. Uh, the law of averages and just you know the thermodynamics uh, are going to say that um, the people who don't get advantages and don't get coddled, who are supposedly privileged, they're going to turn out consistent product because while there's like this segregated uh, section where you get in because you have the right sexuality or skin color or gender or gender identity and where those people are held to a lower or to zero standard, guess who's actually going to typically write better stuff? It's going to be the outside that little plantation, that little concentration camp, that little segregated area you put the so-called uh, disadvantaged people. So um, it's an interesting story about, um, I don't know Captain Marvel's Cree history that well. So they're uh, reintroducing Marvel, then this guy named Wastrel, who was uh, Dr. Walter S. Lawson. Um, we get to see some the old uh, Cree androids, some of their old ships. It looks like this Clint McElroy actually knows. I don't know what's up with these. Is were their proportions always like this? This artist draws people really squat, so I can't assume that this is a mandroid. Like they never, they usually don't look like that. I'm gonna assume this guy has normal body proportions in his previous uh, uh, instances, but. Um, yeah, so all the things I say where um, uh, you can't have people just always agreeing with each other, that there actually has to be conflict in a story to make it interesting, where they don't always know everything, where they can admit to being wrong or being confused, where they make the wrong decision and they're not constantly emotionally validated throughout the book. I legitimately liked a story written <laughs> Uh, uh, with starring Captain Marvel and Ms. Marvel. And I got pre pretty much to this point where I go, oh wait, I don't have anything to roast. I legitimately like this story. Uh, the only thing I can roast is the artist ha draws really big heads and really small uh, likes. Um, I think that's something, you know, as a... You see right here the proportions are pretty normal and then just here and other places, they're really off. Uh, although they're all better than they were in the previous uh, issue. The, the last one, it was really ridiculous. Like, these are classic hero proportions. It's just one of these little things. You know, the editor says, like, hey, man, the heads are too big. It makes them look silly. You know, you know, realistically, you, you might see an actor like that, but uh, to make it cool, make the head smaller, make the shoulders wider, make the legs longer. I, I mentioned this in another video, though. Um, the height of Arnold Schwarzenegger is uh, in dispute. He claims like six foot two, but people who have met him say anywhere from like 5'10 to maybe 6'1. Um, but his, they, you know, people who followed his uh, bodybuilding career, they said he has the proportions of a tall man. So it's going to be, you know, a small head, small chest, and then really long legs. It's a classic hero proportions. This is basic things that an editor, so it was, uh, all right, credit where credit's due, Shannon Andrews. But, Ballesteros and Alana Smith. Maybe they said it, maybe they didn't. Maybe because Clint's uh, and uh, uh, <laughs> I like this name, I Iguara. Iguara. Um, because they're not from a protected class, you can literally say, hey, uh, IG, redo this, do that, do that. So, um, anyway, that's about it. This is a recommend. I mean, it's it's a, it's a mild recommend. <laughs> Sometimes I get my expectations for Marvel comics are so low um, uh, that uh, if it's just an unegregiously bad, I tend to overhype it. Um, this price is ridiculous. Three ninety nine is ridiculous. This is clearly a two ninety nine book. It doesn't really have any. Eh, I guess it's putting some lore into uh, Captain Marvel. So if you're a Captain Marvel fan, um, good cover. Yeah, this is this is quality, and. I could be wrong. I'm always open to hearing counter theories, but I didn't remember there was written by this guy named Clint. I just started reading it. I actually thought it was e-viewing for like half of it. Um, and then I remembered and tell me what you think about my theory. That if you're a non, if you are not a person of privilege, if you don't have a, uh, how should I say it? Fashionable identity, um, that you're just gonna be held to Jared general meritocracy standards and 
it's going to be sink or swim. It's, you know, sell units, turn in a good uh, story, and that's it. No other factors matter. Here's the little twist. No other factors should matter for anyone. So anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for uh, notifications. Thanks to everyone given to the GoFundMe and the Indiegogo. And I will have, uh, I don't think I'm going to do that Joker. Oh, does anyone want to see my comic books? Show and tell. Show and tell. So I got Batman Curse of the White Knight. I got uh, <laughs> She Said Destroy with Leona Kangas. Some books just make you laugh because they're terrible. I think this is the last issue of Spider-Man Life Story. I got uh, Absolute Carnage number two. I got Power Pack number one. Not that I'm a big Power Pack fan, but Louise Simonson. I was just saying Marvel should, you know, they're out there. These talented women are out there who got into the industry not because they're women, but, but because they're talented. Go hire them. They're still alive, they're still vital, they're available, go hire them. This is a one shot, but I still want to see you know, how Louise Simonson holds up. Then we got House of uh, X, and then this is one that I picked it up assuming it was going to be a roast, because I've heard some kind of cringy SJW things about it. Harley Quinn Breaking Glass, I'm just going to flip through it. Uh, this is uh, looks like really good art. I just assumed it was going to be quick and cheaply made. Uh, just American pseudo manga, but that's a legit. It's like 200 pages. Yeah, that's and the price was yeah 16.99. That's a good price. That's a good price. Um, I like this smaller size. I uh, I asked people if they wanted me to do iron sights at this size, and I got a resounding no. Uh, I would like to do it. And that's what I might do. I might do future Indiegogos where we do it at this size. Uh, I think it's a fun size for a comic. Um, so anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to uh, everyone given to the GoFundMe and the Indiegogo. And uh, let me know what you want uh, me to review next. Thanks. Bye.